We're here with Daniel Hanan here in Prague at the Severo Institute, my alma mater. And uh, thank you, Daniel, for thank coming you. down here to Prague. And thank you for accepting the High State Award of Liberland. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic to be here and fantastic to see you again. And fan very honored to hold the, the Liberland Decoration. Thank you. And uh, you know, you've been my favorite member of parliament. I've been translating your speeches also for a couple of years. And um, right now we are in the middle of, of campaign here in Czech Republic. And uh, I'm, I'm one of the persons actually also supporting the Czech exit of the European Union under some reasonable mm. terms. And one of the things that struck me was your speech in European Parliament where you were talking about the costs connected to, to the single market and mm. also the benefits. And uh, I think that calculation is something which people should realize when they're talking about you know, the benefits of the European mm. Union. Nobody here in Czech Republic talks about this, this kind of the secret cost or hidden cost connected uh, to the membership. And when you're talking about the hidden cost of the membership, you should also talk about the hidden benefits, right. which is the single market. And I would really like you yes. to give your idea on it. Well, there was a fascinating survey carried out under the previous commission, uh, I think by the office of Kunter Verheugen, which looked at the costs of compliance, the cost of having to apply all EU regulations, and the benefits of easier free circulation of goods and services as a result of the single market. And it, it concluded that for the EU as a whole, the benefits of the single market were 120 million euros a year, and the cost of compliance was 600 million a year. Now, these are, these are not you know, impossibly high numbers, but it does put into perspective uh, the, the idea that you, know, you have no option but to survive. It's worth also stressing that the companies that most want to keep the existing system are the ones which have learned how to turn that regulatory regime to their advantage. Mm. Uh, they can easily afford the compliance costs and they, they like to use them as a barrier to entry, which is very bad for entrepreneurs, bad for startups, and of course bad for consumers. Yeah, but what, what tells that number, and it's striking to many people, I believe, that basically the cost of regulation mm. is much higher than the benefits of single market. Yes. That, you know, if you keep the, the bureaucracy on the border and you don't import it to your whole economy, you can be five times better Wouldn't off. Wouldn't that be great? And, and in the early days, I think the, the, the founders of the European project would have said, this is a cost worth paying because this is fundamentally a peace project and it's about artificially merging countries. And if that means that we need to uh, divert their trade towards each other at some cost, then it's worth doing. It only more recently have people tried to justify the EU purely as, a, as an economic proposition. Just that single argument, the fact that you can actually do better outside of EU if you don't respect all the regulation that EU does and that you, you pay less uh, through that than, than being inside, uh, it, it, it's very striking to me. And I wish you good luck with all your Thank endeavors. You, my I hope to see you in Likewise. Brussels one day and I hope to see you also in Liberland. I wish some you of the every good success and I wish Liberland every success. Thank Th you. Thank you very much.